Hey guys and welcome to my guide for the green rush deck I brought to monthly cup number 15. I chose this deck as opening deck because I anticipated many people to start red. Um, <laughs> uh, surprisingly nobody I played against uh, chose red to open with but uh, it also had a very good matchup against blue-green. So let's first talk about the matchups in general. Um, your good matchups are red, blue-green, um, any form of rush usually, uh, and slow decks that have a very hard time at setting up good value trades early game, like you also beat uh, sacrifice with it most likely. Um, bad matchups, bad matchups are um, definitely yellow tempo and blue jump, uh, like decks that can swarm the board. Um, if that's the case, you need to rely on imperial drain to stop them from collecting, but also decks with hard removal, of course. So in the current meta, there's not that much last nightmare. Um, choking Sand is of course uh, even bigger punishment quite often with Queenscott and Grizzly. Um, and there wasn't as much mono blue with Frogify. Um, Flower is not that problematic because you have the command, but also you get, eventually get your creature back and you can just save up buffs so you hit face for lots of damage once it comes back or go for some good trades. Um, the most important thing with this deck is if you lose the board, you lose the game. Uh, since compared to a red rush deck, you have no additional reach with burn damage, like no flame burst, no haste creatures, no stuff like that. So um, it's really important you always go for board control unless you can really set up lethal mm, by having multiple creatures on board and going face. Um, so value trades are incredibly important. Uh, at all costs, you want to keep your creatures healthy and alive. And um, that's why we run lots of combat tricks. Um, this deck is pretty basic. It consists of big creatures uh, or cost-efficient creatures. We have Mazeman, Queensguard, uh, Grizzly and World Run Force. So that's 12 creatures uh, of which we want, depending on the matchup, one or two in your opening hand. Um, and then we have uh, a couple of combat tricks, like the command uh, and three buffs. Um, all buffs give you two attack damage. Um, what's important about these creatures is that they are rather high health. Um, so they get the attack damage eventually from your buffs but um, being high health means they will get the chance to trade more often. And then the last part of the deck are Ferrier Manipulation cards. So Runin Shrine lets you cheat for two extra Ferrier, so you can go for Tempo plays. And the Imperial Drain basically does the opposite thing by denying your opponent the um, <laughs> chance to collect. And let's maybe talk about uh, all the cards uh, in specific real quick so imperial grain um, this card in your opening hand allows you to just wait until you have two forests so you can buff your creatures because you if even if your opponent has a board there's no reason for you to play creatures because he's not collecting so he's not getting an advantage what's also very nice about this card is you can use it to block your own orb when your opponent is also trying to counter race you or you can use it to block the space between a creature and the enemy creature, so your creature is protected from the attack. All around a very good card because it's zero cost. Um, then we have the Emperor's Command. Um, this kind of uh, conflicts with maybe uh, Campfire, but in the end this just gives you much more um, utility. Being a neutral is quite important because you don't have to wait until you get to two forests to play this for trades. This deck is all about being fast, so that's why we have only neutrals and two forest um, cards at maximum. Um, also it allows you to kill a flower. Flower is four ferrer right now. This is two ferrer, so it's a pretty decent trade. Um, 
may have cost a value trade so keep your creature healthy it's pretty significant if you open with like a maze man and the opponent is playing combat red and has a um, has an underground boss uh, or if you have a queen's guard and your opponent is yellow and he plays a uh, um, windstorm charger so it's just a little bit of um, extra damage that you need for these early game trades which are really crucial for the stack <clears throat> then of course uh, maze man uh, it's probably your best creature against yellow because you can play it fast you can contest windstorm chargers um, and other stuff with it and yeah it's a four cost for four so that's just solid overall uh, and definitely deserves a spot in this list if you go second and play against another rush player you can play him turn one to step over his lands which is also very nice um, queen's guard uh, one more card that's uh, rather tanky uh, of course the taunt can sometimes be nice utility you can deny your opponent from collecting the combat is uh, also very helpful because it puts uh, some additional pressure on your opponent when you get multiple hits off with this guy if you hit face or trade with small creatures it can be very beneficial for you and being a high health creature makes it a good buff target like I mentioned earlier you get the attack damage from your buffs um, rune and shrine not much to say in a rush deck very good because the opponent doesn't have time to answer your shrines um, like he's not going to flame burst the shrine of course that's like not very efficient um, he wants to trade in with creatures but he needs to use his creatures to defend so this is basically a soul pact with uh, little to no downside um, Runin's Guidance so this deck has actually six healing cards we have Guidance, Command and then we even have the structures that you can use to block so not only these are as buff but the healing makes it so that if your opponent thinks he can outrace you you have a very very good time to like win basically any race that's why this deck is very good against other rush decks um, unless like you get pretty unlucky and they get very good removal out um, having like that much healing is very very helpful in races um, Elevel Embrace, not much to say, it's the best buff in the game right now and yeah, definitely deserves a spot Tiki, um, that's uh, another buff uh, mainly because there's not that much uh, other options but also having the 1-1 one -one can be decent quite often because you can use it to collect um, sometimes to trade if let's say they play shade assassin having the one one um, to, to hit in can be can be just helpful um, and then the grizzly grizzly is nice because it's only one forest so you can play like double land forest drop the grizzly next turn forest trade or yeah basically that um, and also once again it's high health um, creatures are so very good for buffs and then finally the world on force not much to say about the world on force um, pretty sure everybody had one of these games where <laughs> opponent just played a turn three world on force played like one buff or two buffs and went phase and <laughs> Yeah, you, if you don't have the answer, you just lose. So, like I mentioned, um, a very risky deck. If your opponent has the answers, um, then you will have a very frustrating game. Lose pretty early, but you can also lose a win very quick. So, it's good to surprise opponents. Uh, in some matters, this can really shine, um, especially if people play greedy stuff. Um, if there's not much yellow uh, or mono blue with removal so yeah um, I, I hope you enjoy the stack and have some fun with it on ladder and yep